Hi there, welcome to the very last devotional, almost 350 devotionals later. The first one, I did the first one in April 2020, and the Bible does say the first shall be last. So here we, here we are, a new take on that verse. So almost 350 devotionals later, and I counted up 12 people, and there may be one or two more, who have contributed over the uh, years, not just months, to this, two plus years. Um, and I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all those people, uh, whether it was one devotional or, uh, you know, uh, you've contributed regularly over the time for your faithful service. And to all you who have watched the videos and particularly when you've posted encouraging comments and, uh, you know, have encouraged us personally, um, privately um, to continue uh, in what we're doing. So. But it, it's come to an end now, for uh, at least for this particular season. So we don't know what the future might bring. But I want to finish by reading a verse from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. It's verse 3. So Paul writes to the Thessalonians, he says, We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labour prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. And I must admit, it's a, maybe a slightly different devotional um, to, to finish the devotionals today because I've been noting things going on in the in the news. Today marks the 50th anniversary of gay, the gay pride movement, the whole LGBTQ plus movement, um, and how the media and the press almost unanimously just endorsing that particular movement um, made me realise that we are in an intense spiritual battle, a battle for righteousness, a battle for truth. And of course, on the more positive side, uh, last week, the US Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, making it possible now for uh, abortion to be made illegal in the states of America, depending on how they interpret that particular ruling. Um, and as a pro-life person, you know, that really pleases my heart. I believe God is pro-life. Um, I understand that we must be sensitive and loving and understanding in all the in our communications of this and i'll come on to that in a moment but i was a bit saddened when i heard on social media even many christians or profess so-called professing christians um posting pro-choice uh, views and saying they were angry and angered by the uh, ruling or the overturning of the uh, roe v wade case um supposedly meant to be pro-life but saying that you know women's rights actually trump the, the rights of an unborn child which I believe, you know, it just saddened me from a personal point of view. And I hope many people that are watching this particular uh, devotional. Uh, how does that all tie in with what I have uh, read from 1 Thessalonians 1, 3? Because we are in a spiritual battle. We know it's fought in the heavenly realms, but we know it's a battle that is outworked on earth. It's outworked in society. It's a moral battle. It's a, it's a social battle, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's worked out in all these spheres um, of society. And I want to, you know, I like to believe as a church we will continue to battle for truth and for righteousness, for God's truth and God's righteousness. And that, you know, faith, love and hope, the three classic traits of the Christian walk, um, you know, that, that we will believe for breakthrough in these areas in society as we pray for more of heaven to come to earth. You know, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does that look like? Well, I don't know what that looks like in, uh, you know, in its entirety. But I believe, you know, we need the faith to believe for more of heaven to come to earth. Um, so how much heaven are we going to see on earth before Christ returns? Well, how much faith do we have? And that labour prompted by love, that's a strong word in the Greek, that l word labour, a very intense word. You know, love is, is hard going. Loving people who are unlovely, lovely, loving people who disagree with us. You know, that the love needs to motivate everything that we do. And in, in, I'm, I am one pleased in one sense, as I was noting the, uh, the news this morning, that we are, you know, a more tolerant society in the sense that some of the bigotry and the hatred, uh, for example, towards the LGBT community um, has diminished and maybe you know as dissipated it might be still there in some quarters but we must be motivated by love and understanding in all that we do but that doesn't mean that we don't hold firm to the truth and uh, are steadfast and resolute in what we believe 
and our endurance inspired by hope. You know, our, not just our hope, the hope of, of Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ returning, which of course is the ultimate hope, but it, it enables us to persist, to keep going, to not grow weary in doing well. So I want to finish by, you know, um, as it were, blessing you. Uh, on Sunday, Roger read this ironic blessing, the priestly blessing from number six. I'm going to finish with this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So bless you. May God's peace be your portion today and forevermore. Amen.